begin with, in order to use an I.O. variable, you need to know what an I.O. is and where to find it. They can be used for troubleshooting or for preventative programming. Today we're going to focus on preventative programming using the I.O. variables. On the Akuma OSP control, they can be found in the black bar on the side under the I.O. monitor. In the I.O. monitor, this lists all of the I.O.s. The I's being inputs, the O's being outputs. They are all indicators of whether something is currently on or off. What we're looking at now is a list of inputs and outputs. This list shows the current state of any given switch on a machine tool. Gray representing off, red representing on. Any switch or light is going to have an on or off indicator listed in here. And it will have a description in the top left corner as for what it is. The way we use these in a program to prevent problems is to read from the program whether that light is on or off. So we can check for things such as the all coolant off button being on or off. If you were drilling a deep hole, for example, you wouldn't want a through spindle coolant drill running without coolant. So if an operator had the all coolant off button currently lit, that would cause a problem and probably a tool failure and possibly a loud noise. What we're looking at now is a list of inputs and outputs on the machine tool. On the left we have inputs, on the right outputs. Inside the code, I have an if statement using a VIRD, VIRD being an input. It consists of five digits. Those five digits are the address, 0005, and the bit, 0. So inside my code, I have VIRD 0005, So what this says then is if this light is on, alarm the machine. It's on, the machine alarms. Resetting the machine clears the alarm. Turning the feed rate back to zero turns the light off. I'll run the exact same code, and the machine runs just fine. What we're going to do is find that specific output and read that and monitor its state from inside a part program and trigger an alarm if it's in the wrong condition. The ORD, the one that we're referencing specifically, is the all coolant off button. We want to be sure that coolant is running with this program. The difference in how this is addressed starts with it being a VORD as opposed to a VIRD and carries on to the number. Unlike the inputs, where you simply take the address and bit value and input them, this address is 548. On outputs, you subtract the value 512. Therefore, your code becomes 0036. And then there's the F. The reason for the F is because the bit value for 548 goes higher than 10. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Once I hit 10, we use a letter to address it instead. So the bit is now A, B, C, D, E, and F. Inside my code, then, I have 0036, 
which is 548 minus 512. F, it is currently off. In our code, it says if this light is on, run the alarm. It is currently off. So when I run this code, the machine will run. When I change that condition, and I run the code again, I instead get an alarm. So what we're doing is checking to see if the operator currently has the all coolant off button on, and if he does, alarming the machine, preventing further operation, and hopefully preventing any damage. Thank you for watching episode one of the Harwick Tips and Tricks video series. Today we covered I.O. variables, what they are, where they are, and how you can use them. Uh, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. If uh, you have any questions or comments about the content that we've discussed today, feel free to leave those down below. Also, if you have any ideas for any content that you would like us to discuss, uh, feel free to leave that down there as well. Otherwise, we're going to wrap it up here today. Have a great day.